नमस्ते नमस्ते डॉक्टर श्याम सिंह इंडा जी स्टार्ट प्रोग्राम सर good afternoon to all the participants the panelists it gives us immense pleasure uh, that we have among us dr ajay kumar singh uh, the vice chancellor of shri shri ravi shankar university before going into the details of her self cv my kindly request dr pratibha singh madam deputy advisor to kindly welcome the participants and the panelists and give a gist about of today's webinar so dear madam please okay thank you dr shyam uh a very good good afternoon to all the uh, participants and the panelists uh, on behalf of the entire nag family and on behalf of our director professor sc sharma ji on behalf of entire northern region committee uh, dr jagannath patel and dr vinita sahu dr sham sayinda and myself i welcome you all for today's webinar session uh today's webinar is planned for the state of uh, uh, himachal pradesh and as you know that we are uh, all looking towards the possible implementation of national education policy and uh, in this focus uh, today's webinar is to have the implementation being done by the institution and how to uh, take it forward uh, from the nag perspective Uh, and to uh, uh, bring about the awareness about the themes which are highlighted in national education policy uh, this program has been organized so uh, basically uh, our uh, uh, panelists will be focusing on the various aspects of nep namely the skill enhancement the academic bank of credit multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach outcome based education online and distance mode of education and integration of indian knowledge system so all those themes uh, will be discussed maybe at the end of the program we will be having a, a small interaction with the stakeholders where we would be able to address the issues pertaining to these uh, implementation aspects of nep so i welcome you all once again for joining this program and i also would like to uh, thank the today's chief guest uh, uh, professor ajay kumar singh uh, ji uh, vice chancellor shishi university and the other uh, keynote speakers who have joined uh, and uh, agreed upon for delivering the keynote address and the expert lecture for this today's webinar uh, over to you dr shyam singh india thank you madam so it feels a privilege on part of my my personal uh, behalf also and thanks to professor ajay kumar singh ji for accepting our invitation as a key resource person for today's webinar uh, sir series goes in detail around 45 to 46 pages i take uh, one of deliberative sir from you so can i make it as brief as possible so professor ajay kumar singh is currently serving his second term as vice chancellor of shri shri ravi shankar university katak odisha he is the eol from the post of professor at faculty of commerce and business delhi school of economics university of delhi dr singh is honorary professor of john bond neoman university hungary dr singh is fellow and managing trustee of indian commerce association immediate past president of indian commerce association delhi ncr chapter past president of rotary club of delhi maurya past president of indian association for management development iamd fellow of computer society of india honorable president of governing body of divine group of institution and many ngos dr singh is has a blend of teacher researcher coach uh, sorry coach mentor trainer and consultant dr singh a school topper of sscs alumnus editor in chief delhi business school He has also earned the Best Teacher Award for two consecutive years for the year 1998, 1998 and 1999 at IAMT. He has to his credit nine research paper awards, 45 awards of national and international levels, 12 international awards uh, and distinctions. He has been confirmed with two gold uh, medals, also one silver medal, and other distinctions. Dr. Singh was also confirmed by Indian Commerce Association. as a best business academic as a person of the year 
an award for 2011. Dr. Singh has around 34 years of teaching experience in all 221 publications, including 16 books, one international monograph, 115 research papers, 12 articles, 16 case studies, 57 editor goes, two abstracts, and the list goes on and on. Dr. Singh has traveled around 23 countries and has addressed more than 200 conferences, seminars, workshops, programs on and and about 100 online webinars during the pandemic time. So it's a privilege on our part to be having you as a key resource person for this webinar. And it's a privilege also that we also feel that the institutions and the participants who are represented in the institution would be immensely benefited from your vast knowledge experience in the field of higher education. Now may I kindly request you to please uh, share your experience knowledge uh, on uh, NAP 2020. Dr. Ajay Singh, sir, please. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you very much, Dr. Sham Singh Inda Ji, Dr. Pratibha Singh Ji, Dr. Vinita Sahu Ji, the Honorable Director of NAC, uh, Dr. S. Sharma Ji, the entire team of the organizing committee. Uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to be with you all today for this particular most important uh, agenda in the education field in India today that NEP 2020 and how we want to you know, make it successful. So uh, let me share with you my PPT. Can you see that now? Yes, sir. So I'm thankful to NAC for organizing this and giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts with all of you today. Is it moving, not moving? Yeah, so these are my contact details of Sri Sri University. So the vision of higher education institutes is as per NEP, if we see, 2020, which is after 34 years, we have got a policy which is you know, talking about access, equity, and quality of education in a very different manner, and including the knowledge system that we have uh, rebuilding, you know, the vision to bring back the glory of Takshila and Nalinda when people used to come from around the world uh, to India to study. Right now, we see that uh, in America, uh, more than 20% of the students from outside America are from India. So we need to bring back that glory and with that vision, this uh, NEP 2020 has been created or carved out. Uh, so it need to improve the teaching learning process in embedding the technology of the 21st century, the knowledge creation, the innovation ecosystem, what we call as Startup India, Stand Up India, Make in India. And now under this 75th year of our independence, what we are at Nirbhar Bharat and the mission that we have uh, you know, created now, the Honorable uh, Prime Minister giving a call for that. So all this embedding together is basically education institutions have to take a lead in that. So we need to have capacity building and competencies which we need to make sure that it works for us and the outcomes in terms of research. Indian Institute of Science, if we see it, it stands number one in the world in terms of their research outcomes. And then uh, comes the strategic planning part of it. Uh, we can't be standalone institutions, so we need to have global networking, uh, strategic alliances with best of the universities of the world. In Shri University, say, we say best of the East and best of the West. That means, like in Shri University, we have osteopathy, which was founded or created in uh, you know, as a science uh, in 1892 in US. And now uh, in India, we are the uh, first university in Asia not only in India to start osteopathy where World Health Organization have standards on that. So we need to see where the best of the things are there in the world and we need to bring them in India. And what we have the best in terms of yogic science and all other things which are from you know uh, thousands of years that we have uh, access to. So we need to 
give it to the world. And that is how when our Honorable Prime Minister gave the call in the United Nations, June 21 was declared as International Day of Yoga. So uh, that, that, that is about you know strategic alliances, global networking. The largest number of countries actually signed up for that. And now we see how much popular it has become on June 21 that every part of the world we see they are engaged in doing yogic exercises on that day and that then becomes the habit for those people. Key content and resource based learning is to be you know enhanced research collaboration and demand driven programs courses. Uh, we were talking to some of the corporates a few days ago uh, the TCS people were in the university, university so I asked them which are the top most you know uh, courses in demand which are there from the side of students. So that there's a data sciences. Uh, we have signed up uh, MOU with uh, corporates, you know, active industry academic in interface. When we say CC University has signed up uh, with IBM for uh, BTech program in computer science and engineering with the focus on artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, like that. So there are various programs. We have launched a faculty of emerging technologies where which is purely, you know active industry and ac academic in interface and uh, that is the focus of that particular faculty so all the programs of that faculty are actually in association with some industry partner and we have signed up with microsoft palo alto and so many others adobe like that so we need to really have strategic planning focus uh, in the terms of new age technologies as well so technology incubation uh, we have been given uh, a center by MSME now. CG University has been recognized by MSME, and they have given few crores of rupees to be distributed to the startups. So we have onboarded 20 startups now, and we are onboarding 20 more. We have under Mission 4040, we are actually having 40 new startups, 40 patents, and like that. So we have 4040 initiative that we have uh, just in this particular year. This year is the 40th year of Art of Living. So we uh, we took uh, a resolve, a sankalpa, that we will have 40 new initiatives and each initiative will have 40 items in that. So that was 40 you know uh, patents to be filed and published like that. So they, these are different. So 1600 tasks we are doing and technology uh, incubation is one of one such tasks out of those. So. We have to take resolve about these things in the education institutions, higher education institutions to drive these initiatives. So uh, what are the imperatives for education? So skills and knowledge, as was being mentioned while uh, Madam was introducing that today we'll be focusing on these aspects. So education employment gap, as many of the reports have shown that uh, the, the graduates are not that much employable. Uh, as per various reports, quality employment, citizenship. So not only employment, but we have to also talk about the citizenship behavior of the people, those who become graduates, develop key behavioral skills and effectively applying the concept. What we say in Bloom's taxonomy, that there are you know, different levels, uh, remember, understand, apply and all that. So you know, there are six levels, so we need to go to beyond apply also and the uh, ability to create you know not only apply but uh, ability to evaluate and create is also important then we must make sure in CG university when we went online in 2020 the first thing that we did was organize uh, workshops on boom taxonomy so that in the online mode the teachers are able to take the students to the next level of teaching learning process so what, what are the education imperatives? Number two is imbibe higher level of understanding what I was talking to you about. Uh, it's not only about remember and understand, but also uh, higher levels like evaluate and create. So learning approach should be there. It should be learner centric approach, innovation and creativity, excellence should be the key and talent transformation. So the person who gets into the education institution and when he moves out from the education institution, he should be a really different evolved personality, holistically developed personality. So what is the paradigm shift from the earlier ones and the new ones? So from behaviorism to cognitivism, constructivism and metacognitivism. From teacher centric approach, uh, which was there earlier, whatever teacher wanted to teach, 
there is a set structure uh, which a student wants to do a program there was not much uh, you know uh, flexibility which was given to the students and now uh, when cb cs and uh, choice based credit system came when locf came learning outcome based course curriculum framework uh, outcome based education all these are basically step towards uh, learner centric or student centric approach from teacher centric and that is how this nep allows uh, different you know multiple entry multiple exit and all that these are all actually towards learner centric approaches so there's a paradigm shift from individual learning to cooperative collaborative and participatory learning so there are discussion forums in the MOOCs platform the four quadrant approach what we talk about there we uh, have very much importance of peer learning uh, through the various modes and platforms expository learning to discovery learning linear approach to non-linear approach so there is a paradigm shift which needs to take place and teachers have to uh, really uh, you know, move towards the new paradigm otherwise they will become obsolete teachers so education policy lays particular emphasis on the development of the creative potential of the individual education it develops not only cognitive capacities like literacy numeracy and higher order thinking critical thinking and problem solving ability are the more important aspects of it education is key enabler and best tool for achieving economic social mobility inclusion and equality taking into account of the local and global needs of the country so focus should be uh, whether you are able to take care of the local needs also or not one of the most landmark or path breaking thing uh, that has been through this uh, new national education policy 2020 is the academic bank of credit abc to remember it is easy you know abc uh, academic bank of credit the ugc uh, you know had set up an uh, academic bank of credit a virtual entity uh, or an entity which will have virtual records uh, like we have depository system for shares earlier we used to have degrees earlier we used to have the share set certificates which were in the physical form then the depository system was created and all these shares were dematerialized uh, so similar concept of process re-engineering you can say uh, would happen in the academic world also and the credits would be actually maintained by academic bank of credit as your shares are being maintained now in the, uh, the digital form similarly all these things uh, would be available in the academic bank of credit whatever number of credits you have earned so the honorable prime minister of india sri narendra modi ji launched the academic bank of credit on july 29 2021 under the nep 2020 i was attending that program when this was being launched and we are so fortunate that we are at this time in this country uh, where all these reforms are happening the regulation offers four major promises uh, freedom and flexibility in the university degree granting system standardization within the indian higher education system robust integration of the indian higher education system and a move towards internationalization of indian higher education it is a major instrument for facilitating multidisciplinary and holistic education with multiple entry and multiple exit in higher education which was never there it was only when the first year you complete you might get migration in the second year provided both the institutions agree to that so that was the only uh, lateral entry you can say or for engineering from ITIs, you can move to the second year of the program and like that. There were few opportunities which were available in a very structured manner, not much choices were there. But in this case, there are you know, huge choices that have been given. You can even design your own degree. Even if uh, what, what you want to study doesn't fit into any of the programs, there is a special program actually which you can carve out from there. This regulation enables students to select the best courses or combinations that suit their own specific aptitude and quest for knowledge. So that is why it is called student-centric. Such choices will be more friendly to students considering associated logistics and cost of the course opted. It is set up with an aim to provide students with mobility of not only moving between institutes while pursuing one degree, but also offers the flexibility of leaving a course and rejoining after taking some time off from where a student had left it, although it provides seven year 
earlier it was it used to be say if it is a three year degree three plus two it was like that so now it is a seven year time frame that has been provided in this however probably in future and it may be reconsidered if somebody wants to come even after that that flexibility can be enhanced from seven years in the future i i foresee that At right now it is seven years initiatives like these will make the education sector more vibrant and accessible uh, academic bank of credit is envisaged as a digital bank as i was sharing with you that holds the credit earned by a student in any course that he attains from any of the recognized institutions actually the abc would reduce disparity among institutions through standardization of crediting system and promote uniformity in the degree granting mechanism all participating universities will have to accept that nobody can say you are uh, no not that good an institution so i will not accept once they become member of that they will have to accept that this will also reduce the pedagogical gap that exists within higher education institutions of india academic bank of credit is a move towards the internationalization of our higher education system and making our institutions more global in a global environment where nations are moving closer for knowledge sharing and innovation india cannot remain isolated by following a rigid system of granting degrees through its clauses the abc regulation can standardize our higher education up to the international level if institutions choose to join choice still remains with the institutions it also supports the multiple entries and exit systems as offered under the nep which enable a student to get appropriate certification who decide to leave a program after a certain time so if you leave after one year you get a certificate if you leave after two years you get a diploma if you leave after three years you get a degree and if you continue for one more year you might get a degree with research and if you continue for one more year you might get an integrated say mba and like that master degree which is an integrated program of five years so abc will be responsible for opening closing and validating the academic accounts of students like any other bank actually so it's like opening a bank account that is why the name academic bank of credit it will also perform tasks including credit verification credit accumulation credit transfer redemption of students and promotion of the abc among the stakeholders courses will also include online and distance mode courses offered through national schemes like swayam naptal v lab etc we were fortunate to be part in the university of delhi for development of uh, earlier you know epg patshala courses which are you know one of the most downloaded academic content that is available in the country particularly after the lockdown we were seeing the figures it is in millions that people have downloaded that content and that was later converted into four quadrant approach of swayam and we are fortunate that we contributed our bit from the university of delhi there was center of e learning in khalsa college where we had uh, commerce as one of the subjects mcom we did and there were other subjects like chemistry and other science subjects were also there the validity of these academic credits earned by students will be up to 7 years as i mentioned as of now it is like that but we we may reconsider the regulators may reconsider as and when it is required and the validity can also vary based on the subject or discipline students can redeem these credits for instance if a student has accumulated 100 credits which are equivalent to say one year and they decide to drop out once they decide to rejoin they can redeem these credit and seek admission directly in the second year at any university so it's not necessary that you are in the same university you may join any other university that you want the validity will be up to 7 years as per current rules and students will have to complete this within 7 years as per nep 2020 the abc has been and is says to facilitate the academic mobility of students within the freedom to study across the higher education institutions in the country with an appropriate credit transfer mechanism from one program to another leading to attain a degree diploma pg diploma etc so the advantages are uh, that it allows multiple entry multiple exit for students stores student credit for a minimum shelf life of 7 years transfer credit through a single window after approval of source and destination academic institutions only verified academic institutions can upload credits 
and once they become party to it they can't say no to any other institution that we will not accept your credit so that's part of the terms and conditions of becoming party or partner in this process improves transparency and helps to build a more flexible approach to curriculum design and development so there is a concept of holistic and multidisciplinary education in NEP 2020 that would aim to develop all capacities of human beings, intellectual, aesthetic, social, physical, emotional, and moral in an integrated manner. It is an innovative medium through which students can learn sciences, technologies, mathematics with liberal arts, humanities, languages, social sciences, professional skills, Examples could be a team of people from multidisciplinary developing a driverless car, agriculture technology, and many other examples could be there. Uh, even you know, integrated education. When we talk, uh, like I talked about osteopathy, Ayurvedic college that we are starting from this year in the university, Shishi University, uh, we have our, uh, your yogic sciences, as I mentioned to you. After Ayurveda, we will open the allopathic uh, college also in due course of time. So now there is a NCISM, National uh, Council for Integrated System of uh, Medicine or Indian System of Medicine. But we, we want not only from India, from anywhere in the world, whatever are the uh, knowledge systems which are available in the system of medicine, we want to bring them under one roof so that is again, you know, it's about integrated uh, multidisciplinary education from a different perspective where uh, NCISM will play a ma major role uh, so that there is no, you know, watertight compartments. Uh, An allopathic doctor also understands what Ayurveda means or what other Ayush aspects are there and all that. So uh, there are different examples under different things, like we have a program of psychology and contemplative uh, studies under department of contemplative uh, and uh, behavioral sciences so that is about the psychology of the west and the contemplation of the east so it's a mix of the eastern and western knowledge of uh, psychology that we have embedded in a program so it can be embedded in one program that the university wants to structure or the students can pick up from different uh, departments like we have performing arts, so somebody wants to learn Kathak or ODC dance or Bharat Natyam, or they want to uh, learn yoga or they want to have you know agriculture or they want to have design. We have faculty of architecture. So a, a university should have a different dimensions uh, in the system of multidisciplinary when we say. So fortunately, Sishi University, right from the very beginning, was conceived on the lines of multidisciplinary education. So we have management, agriculture, architecture, uh, computer science, um, uh, emerging technologies, as I mentioned to you just now. So it's all a blend of various dimensions, health and wellness. There is a faculty of health and wellness also. So uh, second aspect uh, is about skill development. Uh, which uh, is the agenda of today and the policy envisioned the holistic development of youth with emphasis on not only an upsurge in gross enrollment ratio but also imparting of skills as a key element of the modern education system skill-based education should be part of higher education and should not be restricted to ideas and polytechnics you would be happy to know when cc university was started it was the first program was on skill development and is still going on in partnership with lnt and Schneider, we have two uh, corporates who have signed up with us, Srishi University, right from the beginning. And we have separate skill center. And that was the first activity that actually started in Srishi University. So we uh, have very strong focus uh, on this. Even NALCO supported some of the programs of skill development in the areas where they wanted us to work on. So there are other companies also who have joined hands with us uh, in Shishi University to accomplish this mission of skill development uh, for the people who really need them. So it is not only about the graduates of the universities, uh, those who need to be developed in terms of skill development, but where you are serving as higher education institutions, the nearby villages, 
and the other uh, areas we need to focus on them as well so teaching should include more practical research based training 50% theory and 50% practical theory and practical should be linked so what we are doing in faculty of emerging technologies is largely you know because it is industry driven programs what i was talking to you about artificial intelligence machine learning uh, data sciences and all that cyber security uh, for forensics and all that so uh, there the practical focus is more so if we need to sit with the corporates and ask them what do you really want so that the people are industry ready right from the day one and we need to partner with them so analytical learning should be propagated irrespective of the subject project based research training for the students especially in masters courses irrespective of the subjects vocational courses are under the spotlight now in a bid to make the indian youth skillful and employable therefore there is a revived approach towards running vocational courses which are being offered by various institutes of higher learning in the country the undergraduate vocational courses are pivotal in producing skilled graduates in tune with the industry revolution 4.0 and now people are even talking about uh, industry 5.0 so we need to actually work on those dimensions as well with the vision to make the youth atmanirbhar through skill based education introducing the vocational subjects and training at school level 2 nep 2020 provides that even the students of middle level shall be exposed to hands on training in vocational skills like carpentry plumbing electrical repairing horticulture pottery embroidery etc policy has set the target of providing vocational skills to at least 50% students by 2025 in such a way that the vocational skills acquired at school level may be further extended up to the higher education level depending on the requirement of individual students so if we see and the workforce is growing substantially in 2011 india had a workforce of 477.9 million which has increased to 502.4 in 2017 however as per the 12 plan 85% of the workforce has educational qualifications up to the secondary level only but 55% has educational qualification up to the primary level and merely 2% of the workforce has vocational training whereas if you see in germany the vocational training is very high as per 2014 data on 4.9 lakh seats available for apprenticeship about 2.8 lakh apprentices were trained so there is a gap according to india skills report 2018 more than 12 million people between the ages of 15 and 29 are expected to enter india's workforce every year leading to an about 600 million workforce by 2022 however by 2022 the more skilled workforce of 109 million would be required in 24 key sectors of the economy these figures and trends show two clear challenges that india is facing firstly the workforce that is entering the market does not have the required skills which is very sure everybody talks about it secondly the skilled workforce does not have the relevant skills as is evident on the data in the india skills report 2018 which says that the employability of technically skilled workforce has increased from 33.95% in 2014 to 45.60% in 2018 now we have a latest report also which is available another key challenge is uh, is that uh, as per the said report from the current distribution of the workforce between the unorganized sector and organized sector at 92% 8% respectively it will change slightly to 90 and 10% respectively in 2022 this means that the unorganized sector will continue to power india skilled workforce demand which will essentially require people with education up to secondary and senior secondary levels to be skilled and even non technical graduates to be skilled the relevant and focus area that is a reality of india we need to change that so what are the skill gap concerns for industry ability to grow innovate talent transformation deliver products service on time meet quality standards meet environmental and social requirements now i was talking about the skill report of 2021 which is one of the most referred report digital excellence will be the new normal and we have all seen how we all move towards the online mode of education less than half of indian graduates are employable btechs have higher skills geography wise candidates from maharashtra tamil nadu uttar pradesh karnataka were found with the highest employability skills while hyderabad bangalore and pune ranked top among the cities 
the, these are the uh, statistical figures. If you see year by year, they have shown in the report since the time is less. I'm not going to read all of them. But if you see the highest uh, courses, you know, uh, in that B or B Tech is on the top and then it goes down. Uh, it's very close. MBA is just next to that. And then it uh, B Arts is 42 and BCom is 40%. And then it drops to 30% for BSC, MCA 22.42%, which is an eye opener actually. At one point of time, uh, you know, MCAs were so much in demand that everybody was traveling to US, even not by MCA, but just, just by doing some computer course of six months or a year. I'm talking about 98, 99, 2000. Uh, that was the time when computer was so much in demand. But now it is a misfortune to see that MC has gone down to the level of 22%. Uh, so other studies were also mentioned, time is less. Uh, so how has the hiring intent changed uh, every year? And now we see in the pandemic time, it has come to 10% from 23% in 2015. So we need to really see and hospitality sector uh, and then retail, then core sector, BFSI, retail, BFSI software, hardware, 2019, banking, financial services, insurance, BPO, KPO, ITS, internet business in 2020. They have seen actually uh, the most of the hirings in 2020. Even those people who were not uh, trained, they, they were trained. All those teachers who were not trained actually about how to take online classes were trained. And uh, in CC University, in one day, when, uh, in comment of Odisha on 13th of March 2020, before the national lockdown was announced, and uh, the government of Odisha announced that. And we, on the same day in the evening, trained our student. We had the Google Suit account. So everybody was trained to go online from Monday. And from Monday, the classes went online. That is, I say, 14th is Saturday, 15th is Sunday, 16th of March 2020. So that was the time to shift for people to learn how to move from face-to-face -face physical mode to online mode. And then 2021 BFSI software, hardware and IT and internet businesses, they have hired the most. So we must see where the hiring is the maximum and then work accordingly. The, uh, the courses should be, you know, higher education institutions should design courses accordingly. Job demand is more in the following states, Delhi, NCR, Karnataka, Maharashtra, uh, so state-wise also we need to see, so we need to leverage the data, data analytics. It is said data is the new oil. So we need to understand and design our strategies accordingly. So 2015, 16, uh, up to 2021, if you see uh, Delhi and NCR, Odisha, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, so Odisha is a new entrant you can see from each of the years. Nowhere Odisha was mentioned in the top three states, but now Odisha is number two. And Uttar Pradesh has been number three from the last three years in 2015 also, 16 also it was uh, three and two. So Uttar Pradesh is doing very well from the last few years. And uh, Delhi uh, NCR has done well in 2021 and it was number two in 2018 and it was number three in 2016. So state-wise, highest employability, the, the, these are the statistics. Uh, Maharashtra number one, Tamil Nadu number two, three, three is Uttar Pradesh, and uh, four is Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Delhi, Telangana, Gujarat, West Bengal, and Rajasthan. City-wise, uh, the highest employability, if you see, the, these are the cities, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Pune, New Delhi, Chennai, Lucknow, Coimbatore, Nellore, Gurgaon, and Mangalore. And if you see men versus women from 2015 to 21, these are the statistics which are given. So uh, green is with men and orange is with women. If you see 34 and uh, this 37.88 uh, is for 2015 and now it is 34.26 for men and 41.25 uh, for uh, in 2021. Now that is the employability quotient of men and women. So we need to increase this actually. So uh, we need to know what are the future skills that are going to be in demand. Uh, so soft skills are vital in terms of problem solving skills, communication, active learning, resilience, uh, uh, flexibility, digital dexterity, analytical and critical thinking. 
and then uh, technical skills in demand uh, python programming neural networks cloud computing supply chain general statistics and skill gap is maximum in data science artificial intelligence natural language processing that is why we have seen uh, even when we talk to ibm or when we talk to microsoft tcs they all are saying the same language so it is as per the reports also and the trending new skills are data science artificial intelligence and natural language processing dono trending bhi hai skill gap bhi maximum hai so every university should actually take charge of these aspects and make sure that their students are future ready and then next aspects is integration of indian languages so one of the important aspects even iits have taken charge of this and there are different languages where the test je and other tests are happening now so uh, we need to focus on this on indian languages arts and culture a language is not just words it's a culture a tradition a unification of a community a whole history that creates what a community is it's all embodied in a language in order to promote arts and culture it is very important to promote indian languages and the journey has started actually from iits i must say they have taken the lead india is a country with languages changing every 15 to 20 kilometers according to the native communication style people in india talk to each other in their native language which also shows their culture and traditions to their language without the promotion of languages it's not possible to promote art in the form of film plays literature music etc in order to preserve and promote culture one must preserve and promote its languages culture is like to a house and the language the door india has lost 220 languages in the last 50 years alone and the unesco has declared 197 indian languages as endangered so we need to have an alarm bell on this the promotion of indian languages will be integrated into school and higher education at every level so fortunately now we have a policy which takes care of this primary learning through native mother tongue develops the cognitive abilities of a child and eases the process of acquiring basic literacy skills and understanding complex concepts compared to those who are taught in their second language in order to help students learn these languages there will be ensured availability of high quality learning materials in the form of worldwide textbooks uh, magazines videos poems plays novels etc moreover the language must have a consistent update to their vocabulary in the dictionary so that the students can be provided with education in terms of the latest topics and issues of the country the languages of india along with their art and culture will be documented through the online portals web and wiki to preserve the native language and their knowledge these platforms will consist of dictionaries videos recordings people especially elders speaking the language reciting poetry telling stories and performing folk songs plays dance and much more abhi prime minister uh, you know just jumped into the uh, people those who are performing the folk songs and dance in a program i think yesterday only the general public uh, possessing and a high uh, level knowledge of the language will also be invited to contribute to the portal and add their own learning resources these web portals will be managed by the universities and their research team and will be funded by the nrf the policy also stated the introduction of e courses in eight major regional languages instead of limiting the e content to hindi and english e courses will be developed in tamil telugu kannada malayalam gujarati marathi odia and bengali more hais and more programs in higher education will use the mother tongue or local language as a medium of instruction and or offer programs bilingually so online and digital education is going to be the norm technology enabled learning can not only bring in transformational change in online education experience it can also enhance and supplement regular classroom based pedagogy it could offer more flexibility in learning support than the traditional formats technology offers teachers the opportunity to become more collaborative and extend learning beyond classrooms educators could create learning communities comprising students fellow educators and experts in various disciplines around the world in shishi university we have started now the blended mode of learning mr jacker is with me here uh, he has developed an lms in house lms and we can help all the universities if you want we can provide you support for that if you want to have your own lms 
So online learning, blended learning, e-learning, virtual learning, virtual universities, skill development universities, all these are the future things which have become now important. So what we were discussing earlier also outcome based education is a student centric teaching and learning methodology in which the course delivery assessment are planned to achieve stated objectives and outcomes. It focuses on measuring student performance that is outcomes at different levels, skills, knowledge and behavior. We need to take care of all of them. So OBE, OBC, OBLT and OBA A is about assessment how to measure what the student has achieved. So unless he has become competent enough, it is of no use. So how to make the student achieve the outcome? There are certain attributes which you need to take care of. What the student should be able to do after well, you have done the teaching part of it. So it's not only that you have just given an outcome is what the learner will be able to do, perform as a result of some learning experience in the context of formal education. If you have taught him accounts, he can't do work on any software like Tally or any other accounting software package, which is the need of the hour in the real life, then it is of no use to teach him accounts. If you have taught him tax and he can't file income tax return, there is no use to teach that taxation to him. So whatever is required to do in real life, whether he's become competent to do that or not is very important to be measured. So an outcome is what the student should be able to do at the end of the program or course or instructional unit. Outcome provides the basis for an effective interaction among stakeholders. The level of outcomes at the level of department, uh, vision, mission, program, education, PEOs, program outcome, PEOs, program specific outcomes, course outcomes. There are specific uh, workshops which are required only on this because once you develop them, you need to really work forward and backward whether it was done properly or not. Please stop me, Dr. Shyam Singh Indaji, if I have exceeded the time. An outline of such a process, uh, brainstorming with all the stakeholders concerned, including management, faculty, current students, alumni, employers, and industry experts. We conducted some workshops in our university on these aspects as well. There can be multiple follow-up sessions. It is required, actually, follow-up sessions are required. Formulation of the vision and mission statements for validation by experts from academia and industry, the above three steps may have to be attributed to arrive at the final version of this. So open and distance learning, uh, we have talked a lot about this, so I will not go into the details, time is less. So education 1.0 was about lectures and memorization. Pahade bhi yaad karte te, us samay aajkal ke bachchon ko shayad pahade tables jis ko bolte hain, wo shayad yaad bhi na ho. Education 2.0, internet enabled learning, so open source, education 3.0, knowledge producing, education. And now uh, we are into innovation producing education. So we have to match with industry 4.0. There's no other choice. If we want our students to be employable, we have to provide this education 4.0. And that is why we are organizing such kind of workshops, conferences, seminars. So from basic to competent to advanced to expert, that is a journey. You know. So basic is about understanding concepts, principles, philosophy, etc. And if you can independently contribute, you become competent about that. And if you are able to teach that, you, are, you can coach that, you can put into practice, then that means you have the advanced level. And when you can possess thought leadership, you can guide people, people look up to you as uh, for reference uh, generate you can generate new ideas you can know it then you become an expert so that is from level one to four you can say so employability skills we have already talked about it so i'm not going to go into more details of that thank you very much for inviting me and uh, allowing me to share my thoughts with you you can ask questions if you want or you can take it up at the end of it thank you Ajay, sir for a beautiful and elaborative presentation on various aspects of national education policy, especially in terms of the academic bank of credit, the online and digital education, the pillars of national education policy, Indian knowledge system, the importance of preservation of culture and heritage, where an example was very meticulously cited around 200 languages, they have become extinct, around 197 they are in the danger. So we have to give them also due importance in this NAP, we are sure they have given that due importance. We are very thankful to you, sir, for this elaborative presentation. So I think all participants might have been immensely benefited. 
uh, now we can have the question and answer session sir baswa reddy sir might be joining uh, after some time ICT team, you are kindly requested to please uh, facilitate the question and answer session. The panelist is there to respond to the query. Request the participant to raise their hand. Okay. Yes, sir. I request the participant to raise their hand if they have any questions. Or they can write in the chat whatever is convenient to them. Yes, sir. Dr. Sachin Kumar, you may ask your question. Hello, Namaste, sir. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, sir, I have one uh, small question. Um, I have heard from someone, I'm just correct me if it's wrong, uh, that in Academic Bank of Credit, uh, only those institutions will be able to participate who would have scored a particular grade uh, as PARNAC. Is it true or is it open for all? No, it is true. As far as I know, it is true. Dr. Sham Singh, if you want to correct me if I am wrong. So, so in that case, would not wouldn't that be very exclusionary in in practice? Because majority of institutions in this country, particularly the undergrad colleges, they have not scored A. And the kind of infrastructure they are having, I don't see them achieving A grade next 20 years. So, uh, India lives in 18th century, 19th century, 20th century, and 21st century also. True, true. So, uh, so uh, we can't uh, upgrade all the institutions in day one, but uh, the choice, choice is with the student where he wants to study, what kind of institution. So, that is an, a kind of an incentive also to go for accreditation and to improve the quality. So even for online education, it is only for those institutions who have a, a grade minimum. Earlier it was A plus, so now they have allowed uh, up to a, a grade institution. So uh, there is this is like a prerequisite, you know, that if you can't maintain quality, how how you expect students to come to you for you know looking for expertise from your place? So you need to rise to the minimum standards of education. And accreditation is the only process we have by which we can certify that, okay, you follow certain minimum norms and standards. It's a very, very well designed. 70% is quantitative based, 30% is qualitative based. If you see the parameters of NAC, so not every institution will get all the things in all times. So True. I see Dr. Ishwar, Professor DG has also joined. Welcome, sir. Namaste. Uh, namaskar, Namaskar, sir. Namaste, Namaste, sir. Namaste, Happy to see you, sir. Happy to see you. <laughs> Good Thank to you. see you, sir. Happy to see you. <laughs> so I was, I was holding the floor in your absence, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Actually, there was one important meeting. Just, yes, yes, yes. I was told. I was told about okay, that. Sir. So you are in time. You are not late. You are in time. <laughs> <laughs> sir, yes, fine. <laughs> Yes, uh, ji. Shall we go ahead and? Yeah, the organizers can take charge and welcome Dr. Ishwarvi Basavaradi Sam. Sham sir. I join hands in welcoming Dr. Ishwari Basavaradi ji. From uh, on behalf of NAC, I'm Dr. Pratibha Singh, working as deputy advisor in NAC. Uh, so we were continuing the question answer session because we had uh, uh, gone through the presentation given by Professor Ajay Kumar Singh ji. Uh, so I think we can continue if we uh, you you permit us, sir. No, you can you can have his talk now. Okay. 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 Because he's a very busy man. Again, if there is a call from the ministry, we'll have to go. <laughs> Please take no, no, no. <laughs> you no, this time. No. Office timing sometimes it is very risky for Yes, yes, I can understand that. You are in demand, you know. And it's good that you are in demand. <laughs> yes. No problem. I will be there, sir, up to no problem up to five o'clock. I will speak extemporly and I will answer the questions. Because uh 
Uh, really, I prepared uh, some other things. I will speak in another platform. Okay, go ahead, Pratibhaji, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Shyam? I think he is uh, some connectivity issue with him. Uh, so I uh, would like to welcome you for uh, the uh, session and the uh, talk uh, for this particular webinar, Plan for National Education Policy. On behalf of NAC and on behalf of Director NAC, I would like to welcome you and invite you for sharing your thoughts in this particular forum. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you. Um, most respected uh, Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor uh, Ajay Kumar Singh, sir, uh, Dr. Prathiva Singh, and I do remember the advisor, NAC, Patil, sir, and all the uh, like uh, eminent academicians and uh, participants of this webinar. Uh, just uh, would like to mention six points uh, which has come in my mind just uh, during last 20 minutes of recalling the EP and its importance uh, because more than seven, eight years, and from 2005, I am uh, involved in one or the other way, framing these uh, national education policy, uh, where uh, everybody's emphasized the importance of yoga for, for physical, mental, especially uh, spiritual uh, well being. So in this aspect, uh, there are, I identified uh, six dimensions uh, where yoga can play important role in the new education policy. Uh, the first one is, uh, we have to know that uh, yoga is a multidisciplinary subject. Some, uh, if you go to the philosophy, I worked in Karnataka University for more than 16 years as head of the department. There it was in the social science. In some other uh, university, it is in education, Sagar University. And in Mangalore University, it is in science faculty. Here in uh, IP University in Delhi, it is in the medical faculty. So uh, that itself shows uh, in uh, some universities in humanity and physical education. So now uh, today, uh, tomorrow, we are celebrating Naturopathy Day and Ayush Ministry has seven systems. So yoga is the uh, yoga day is being celebrated by all the systems. That means uh, every system has acceptance for the yoga and there is a place for yoga. Here it is a, uh, first of all, a Germanity, the lot of literature are there in the Sanskrit literature, but we should not forget the rich literature in the regional languages. The second one is uh, the, in the philosophy, yoga is a darshan, and yoga is a science and technology. It's a technology nowadays plays an important role in the various yoga models we are developing for the personality development, for the wellness, well-being, various therapies. We are using the science and technology in a very accurate way. And that's why this is the therapy, the science, these things. So uh, first of all, in that multidisciplinary where yoga comes, one, in my opinion, yoga as a subject of education. Now, uh, you may be knowing that in 2014, when Honorable Prime Minister, uh, first letter I received on 12th of August 2014, within two months of his swearing in, very emphasized two things. Uh, so, let us introduce yoga in all the teachers' training programs. 
So there are more than 13 teacher training programs conducted by NCT and where yoga has been a compulsory subject. Now it is necessary to develop a cadre. There should be a yoga teacher's cadre. Therefore, uh, there uh, in the NCT, we have a health, physical education in yoga, one subject. So one subject we have. So therefore, uh, from uh, first standard to 12th standard, NCRT had already made, and there are 13 teachers training program. Yoga is made compulsory. Therefore, there is a need to produce yoga for health, for personality development, for edu value education. These are the three important components. So basically, yoga is education. So we have many definitions of education. Yoga fulfills that definition of yoga education. Therefore, yoga develops the personality. Yoga develops, uh, helps to develop the human values. Yoga helps to maintain, prevent the, it is a preventive medicine. Ayam dukkham anagatam. Dukkha is inevitable, but yoga has a solution for that. So this is the one thing. Second one is uh, yoga as a uh, therapy. Nowadays, uh, in health, we have a management of diseases. Now it goes with every system of medicine. This is the second uh, widest dimension in the present day context. Therefore, yoga as a therapy, adjunctive or complementary therapy, it has the worldwide uh, acceptance. There are more than 13,000 uh, research papers published in peer-reviewed index journals and more than 7,000 only on meditation. That shows the importance of uh, yoga as a therapy. The clinical research I'm talking about, not fundamental research. So therefore, uh, yoga has the dimension of a management of the various non-communicable disorders. Third one is yoga as our culture. Yoga, in my opinion, it's our culture, Indian culture. So ICCR is deputing uh, yoga teachers, Indian culture to various countries. You all know the importance of our culture. It's our language. It's a Vasudeva Kutumba. We have a multi-language nation, multi-society, multi-religions. But we are all together. That itself, yoga binds us. So if you go to the in-depth, uh, the music, the art, the ethnicities, so all are uh, involved. That's why UNESCO in 2016, many people doesn't know, recognize as yoga as intangible cultural heritage of humanity. In December 1st, 2016, it has been detailed. That's why yoga as our culture. So we have and third one is nowadays management. Yoga for the most important stress management, office management, personality management. So we are coming up with the modules of various. Now I come up with a five minutes yoga break model, manage the work stress during the working hours of executives and also the workers even the clerical staff also, teaching staff also, executives also. So we are developing uh, models based on the ancient tradition and also using the modern medical parameters. So therefore management, uh, not only in the stress management, is office management, there's values of philosophy of yoga as provided ample thing. Why I'm talking you, I am a student of three things. One is basically, I'm a student of science. Uh, we want to see everything from the scientific angle. I'm a student of physics. Second one is, uh, I'm also the student of philosophy, the analytical thinking. Third one is, I'm a student of yoga. Unless I experience and I can't, I can't tell. 
therefore i am experiencing the first one is uh, for anything it's a philosophy philosophy it is in the objective man then it come to the empirical science scientific man then science to the technology technology to the appliances so where uh, yoga plays an important role in the new education policy so it is in the fourth dimension is the management very important i i of you i come up with a yoga institute management center management now we have a yoga certification board certifying various categories of yoga professionals to manage the these things this is the uh, sorry fourth one the fifth dimension i found is uh, yoga as for wellness it's a billion dollar industries in many countries especially in the united states yoga has a billion rupees i'm not talking about only health but you know, wellness is a bigger industry therefore yoga for wellness there are multiple dimensions the last one every individual has a spiritual quest i put it for want to always put it first but here i am putting it in the last the spiritual quest is the essence of that's why i said what is the essence of human being the spirit or the soul the atman is the essence of human being spirituality is the essence of human being. without the spirituality but uh, unfortunately many not scholars but uh, common people connect the spirituality into religion sect and prayers etc but uh, spirituality is to know what i am what my nature what my nature of not only the essential nature but also nature of my mind nature of my thoughts so all these things as uh, the sixth dimension of spirituality this is the core of you so why i am mentioning it all these uh, you can go on telling but i have identified six major dimensions which can include in the suppose uh, now in the uh, new education policy there is a multidisciplinary and there is a flexibility and by 2013 should have a multidisciplinary university the university shall have all such type of uh, it's not confined to the medical only arts only the science only earlier when we were studying university means it has everything including uh, agriculture medical engineering my university was having everything but later on now we have a separate separate university for each and every subject but uh, now again uh, university means it's having all the subjects that concept is now again coming back in the i'm so happy that there is a flexibility and there is a multiple entries etc now if you want to take the credit based uh, choice based yeah you are all well know well aware of it i don't want to talk but if you want to make a 32 hours of a one two credits or and four credits or even one paper on education on is suppose if you take a consciousness if a phys or philosopher physics student he can talk on on the physics and consciousness so i'm just giving the example there are various kinds of these things are there then so that most importantly to bring our culture so wellness to the people to spread the word here we are all having the problems i have visited many countries but when i come to my nation we have several problems but we are very happy families here you come to my village i have seen i born and brought up in a village where uh, there are several problems problems of drinking water problems of food everybody work but at the end of the day we sleep well we talk well eat together vasudeva kutumbakam means can be seen in our indian culture and it is being lived and yoga is that 
so therefore the how what time is suitable to wake up what time to suitable to eat what time suitable to work what time suitable to sleep all these things are mentioned in our scriptures and it is being followed totally nowadays yoga means some difficult postures or some pranayama or some gurus are giving uh, directions to meditate taking you the world to it is not the reality so i found the real yogis are living it at that our villages it is time to inculcate in our syllabus about our food culture and we are celebrating portion aishpa portion or yoga portion so all these things are several dimensions are where i am definitely give the details in writing in a, in a form of an article so if any questions are there i am definitely ready to answer now what are the avenue in the new education policy what i found it's not only the man making a nation building but it's a job opportunities job opportunities suppose now uh, yoga you can take every school college universities have the yoga teachers then now ayushman bharat 1 lakh 50 thousand uh, wellness centers will have a yoga therapist compulsion so we don't have that many of uh, yoga therapists or wellness instructors so then fit india there also yoga is being recognized yogasana is being recognized as a competitive sport that skill and in all the sports activities uh, been given priorities how to improve the skills of the athletes so we need the skill and that's why yoga has been considered as one of the skill to improve the performance performance in improvement of the athletes so uh, education and in the all the hospitals wellness centers yoga is being introduced therefore it is a small uh, introduction of the two credits twice based credits to bring awareness and uh, we can take up any type of uh, full fledged courses of four years i request uh, the new education policy we are trying to have the proper nomenclature so you know, it is ba yoga bsc yoga or like this and uh, two years three years back we start for bachelor of yoga education and science ba y s d y e s or something like that we will try with the ugc having a proper nomenclatures approved by the competent authorities in the higher education so that uh, we can give the guidelines for various in the yoga certification board for 30 volunteer program also we had given the guidelines knowledge and skill knowledge in terms of uh, ancient knowledge traditional texts knowledge in terms of uh, um, medical sciences anatomy physiology then the biological sciences then the psychology and the knowledge about the applications so applications of yoga in the therapy in the value system etc so all these things we have very standardized models then the skill the performance demonstration skill then the teaching skill therapy skills and uh, various skills in yoga they have been well developed modules are available so with these uh, if we integrate in any school or in a small college also we can have compulsory one two credits or 32 hours of yoga module based upon the interest suppose in now mbbs also in 20 Uh, sorry uh, 2005 we tried to introduce but there was a resistance in 2009 we found out 60 hours program for medical graduates now they are adopted so the thinking process take one generation to implement it so therefore uh, there is lot of work during last uh, two decades now it is high time to make best use of uh, yoga is ours it's not me or you it is for everybody 
I'm taking in this. It's uh, our culture, our tradition. Our honorable prime minister, wherever he goes outside, he always mentions about yoga. People ask about him, about yoga and his practices. We get a lot of respect and recognitions because of him. So your faculty uh, can be trained, the students can be trained, the workers can be trained, efficiency can be brought up, personality can be developed, value system can be restored. Our cultural aspects can wide various dimensions of cultures can be taken care of. So with these, uh, we have a lot of uh, opportunities and avenues in the new education policy with respect to yoga as education. And I mentioned about six dimensions. That's uh, the main point. Now, lastly, uh, uh, there are many apprehensions about the new education policies. I don't find, uh, if you see the global scenario, so last time we were uh, discussing about the, the entrance of the international campuses here or something, they're all the long term. They think that will be addressed as and when the problems arise in a big manner. But still, uh, there is a scope for modification. It is indigenous, I prefer the indigenous way of uh, making the education globalized, where our indigenous subjects, many things, even mathematics or science subjects, are having a greater role. We have to invent, we have to, discover, we have to study the, the greatest discoveries so that the new education policy will pave a way for the individual nation building, man making and nation building. These few words and I'm happy to answer the queries. Thank you, Dr. Pratiba. And Professor, sir, you are always very kind. Uh, Jay Kumar, sir. Thank you all the participants and I pay my request to respected uh, advisor, yes. Professor. Thank you so much, uh, Ishwar, sir. Thank you so much for taking out your time from a busy schedule also. We know that you are very occupied today still for the benefit of participants you have joined. But I'll take the liberty from you. For the benefit of participants, I'll just give a brief introduction of Sir, which I could not do in the beginning. Uh, sir uh, currently is a director of Moraji uh, National Institute of Yoga, Ministry of Ayush Government of India, New Delhi for the last 16 years. Sir was also the head of the Institute of Yoga Certification Board, Ministry of Ayush Government of India since 2018. Project Director, World Health, uh, World Health Organization, Traditional Medicine Yoga since 2013. He also has additional charge of Advisor Yoga and Naturopathy, Ministry of Ayush Government of India during 1920. He also had the additional charge of Director, CCRY from 2010 to 12 and 2019 to 2020. Sir is also past president of National Yoga Sports Federation, recognized body of Government of India, and senior vice president of International Yoga Sports Federation, member of governing council of Indian Yoga Association, and many other government and non-government organizations to name as ICCR, ICMR, UGC, NCRT, NCTC, IGNU, SAIL, Ministry of Railways, Ministry of HRD, now Ministry of Education, TKDL, Fit India, etc. Sir has done his MS in Physics, I mean, is a, uh, sorry, Philosophy, PhD in Yoga, Philosophy, and also two BG, PG diplomas to his credit. Sir has more than three decades, that is, in all 32 years of experience in yoga, education, training, therapy, and research. And he is one of the eminent yoga masters of India who has been instrumental in bringing common yoga protocol for International Day of Yoga. Sir has imparted yoga education, training and therapy to more than 1 lakh people of all sections of the society and has participated in hundreds of national and international seminars, conferences, webinars and presented research papers, especially on yoga, or, uh, benefits of yoga and all that. He has completed 10 major research and development projects and published more than 12 research papers, 28 booklets, 10 monographs evaluated hundreds of research projects as member and chairman of different research project evaluation committee and he has taken a lot of initiative to establish five advanced centers for yoga education therapy and research in premium medical institutions of the country and has provided disease specific yoga research protocols to the projects 
as we know through his cv we know that he is a very renowned personality especially in field of yoga he has traveled abroad to countries such as south africa russia hungary china thailand hong kong north north korea austria germany turkey italy france to name a few for representing government of india and institute moraji national institute of yoga he has been instrumental in establishing 159 yoga wellness centers four yoga therapy centers in territory hospitals 20 yoga wellness centers in cgcs dispensary and four yoga centers in sail stadium and sir is also master of ceremony giving yoga instruction to more than 40000 people including honorable prime minister of india shri narendra modi ji at rajpur new delhi which went into creating two guinness world records sir we are in deeply elated also to have your presence we are thankful to you for accepting our invitations and we have been immensely benefited by your talk also participants out here sir if you give the permission if they have any queries they may ask you sir i saw one thank you very much for your kind words many people know me there is no need of formal introduction many people know me and my institute and i i got one question by professor op monga which is very relevant how we can put in practice for majority student at university it's a very very odd question so for your uh, example sir uh, there in india what happens it's a multidisciplinary and multicultural so there are several uh, yoga schools like art of living sadguru and patanjali so many things are coming up so that's why what we did in 2014 15 we brought in a common yoga protocol for wellness so even uh, the united nation also emphasize on the so it is for the disease prevention and also for the wellness so these are the two things and uh, where we developed at 36 hours uh, 40 uh, 24 days it is a very systematized way so every day or you can put it in twice in a week one and a half hours for 3 months or if you are having the facilities and every day one hour one and a half hour we have a app who yam app it is the first time our institute is a who recognized pilates center only one in the world we have developed with who yam yoga app it is there in the public domain there is no need of registration etc so there we have a 10 minutes model 20 minutes model 45 minutes model so there is each asana training models are also there so my my request is if anybody wants to have a real benefits of yoga as per my experience in a month time he should practice minimum 18 days and if he practice 24 to 26 days of a moon or 28 days so you will get the optimum uh, benefits so it may be 45 minutes or maximum 1 hour so accordingly we prepared a teaching models one the first day second day third day so now we are translating into almost all indian languages it's called a yoga volunteer program of 36 hours 6 hours of lecture half an hour half an hour 12 lectures on yoga yoga for ahara and uh, what are the precautions to be taken everything 12 lectures and 30 hours of training program models so now we have in english and uh, hindi training models that is about app now we are translating into almost all languages same thing for if you want to become a protocol instructor we have 200 hours of uh, uh, modules are there and then wellness instructor we have 400 hours modules it's not my institution it's a government of india's board and uh, like this we have a various models and also we have a ready made material now only thing my job is to convert them into uh, you know, various indian languages so very soon we are going for the six uh, international un recognized languages uh, our target is to reach now common yoga protocol is being practiced by more than 27 crores 270 or million people are practicing it now we want to reach to the 100 crores in next 2 3 years 
so that's why we can download then now why break why break one app is there yoga break it's a five minutes so it is also there in the public domain like this through app through models through reading materials we are we are trying to reach the especially the students community the teaching communities so for any such a type of thing anything sir you want a two credit model for particular these things kindly address us so we'll prepare it in a one week or two weeks of time we'll definitely provide it then we can place it before the bos etc as per the university procedures so i do hope uh, i answered professor monga's question then uh, any other thing a policy you are true as far as you guys i have answered professor monga's question any other questions any other participants or care you can write in the chat box so you can raise your hand we will felicitate you please ask the question to the dignitary present Pusha, can you help with the question answer session, please? Yes, sir. Um, I request the participant to raise their hand if they have any questions. If they put in the chat box also, I can read if it is visible here. Raise. Uh, even uh, Pratibhaji and Anupaji, if they send any questions, please forward it to me and uh, i will do the opt answers as far as yoga is concerned anything related to yoga i'm very happy to address them. Um, sir i couldn't see any uh, hands raised oh uh, pusha sachin kumar has raised the hand I think uh, I have already uh, asked that question, sir. In the beginning, in the very beginning, I have already asked. What is the? Uh, yes, sir. That question was uh, asked to Professor Ajay Kumar, sir, and he has answered it, sir. Okay, thank you. If any other participant wants to ask question, we request you kindly raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Sir? Push, I think there are no more queries or questions. Sir, yes. what you do if there are any queries in the chat box, we'll collect it and we'll send it to you on email, sir. Thank you. So I will send the presentation. So yeah, please. I spoke extemporally and yes, sir. Fear of the professor. Uh, I have not uh, listened to Dr. Pratia, madam, to please propose a vote of thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Shyam, and uh, we are highly delighted to have uh, the honorable uh, keynote speaker and the chief guest of today's program. So it's now time to give a formal vote of thanks to uh, the delegates. Uh, so in this uh, event, I would like to first thank our honorable director, Professor S. E. Sharmaji, uh, for uh, motivating all of us, all the NAC officials, to undertake these activities with full enthusiasm. And uh, I would like to thank uh, our uh, chief guest of today's program and the guest of honor, uh, Dr. Ishwar uh, Basavredi ji and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Ajay Kumar Singh ji for uh, sparing the time with the particular uh, delivering the keynote address and the uh, inaugural address for this program. I hope the state part participants would have been benefited with by the all the deliberations that has been made. Uh, they have spoken very important points, relevant points, uh, relevant to the NEP implementation and how the yoga can be treated as a skill that is very relevant to, to today's scenario where uh, we are looking at uh, integrating the skill component in mainstream education. So I am very thankful to you, sir, for sparing your valuable knowledge with the August gathering. Uh, I would like to thank the entire Northern Region 
uh, uh, team uh, comprising of Dr. Jagannath Patil and uh, uh, Shyam Singhinda, Vinita Sapu, and myself. Uh, I would like to thank our ICT team, uh, Pushya, and all others who have been uh, connected together. Uh, last uh, but not the least, uh, all the participants who have been actively lis listening and participating in this particular event uh, organized for this Himachal Pradesh in, uh, in state of the uh, country. Uh, thank you one and all. Uh, over to you, Dr. Shyam Singhinda. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we once again thank you uh, to the respective uh, chief guests, Professor Baswariti sir, Ajay Kumar Singh sir also, uh, to all the participants also. In future, we will be also hosting such webinars. We kindly request you, sir, in future also, whenever there is a need, kindly accept our invitation out of your busy schedule. We, I know that you're very busy, sir. Still, you have taken your time out. We'll be also hoping that in future also you accept our invitation. Same goes to Professor Ajay Kumar Singhji also, who is always ready to accept our invitation in the last hour also. Thank you one again, and special thank you to the participants who have joined. Because of you, this webinar has been successful. Uh, Pratima, Adam, now can you close the webinar, please? Yes, Dr. Shamsi. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Can much. you close the webinar? Yes, yes, sir. yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir, Professor Ajay Kumar. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was great to hear you and the, and the progress that India has made in the field of yoga from you. Thank you very much for sharing all that. Thank you, thank you Vinita ji. Thank you. Thank you for bearing my weight. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. We are closing the session.